How's it going guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at this really interesting little sushi pack. And this is also made in Japan and by iWacko as well. And as you know, I review a lot of iWacko erasers. So I was excited to see one that's encased into something rather than them just being thrown into a bag. So let's take a closer look at these guys and see how they come apart. There we go. Here's the case right here. That's what the bottom looks like. It almost looks like it has kind of a gold underlay. Interesting. Then we just remove the lid. And let's see what these are. And see how they come apart, because these are way too, oh, there's a little pig right there that they actually go into. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and focus in on these guys. So it looks as though we have some fish eggs on top. Similar design to the larger one. There's no rice underneath. And they're fused at the bottom, it looks like. With a little tiny leaf that goes right here. Some kind of uh, vegetable right there. So that's pretty cool. We have some more of these guys, I believe. We've reviewed them before. It looks like it's coming out in multiple pieces, though. Let's put them back together. Here's this one. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's uh, scrambled eggs on top of rice. Yeah, looks pretty good. So this one is the salmon. Nice rice bottom, same texture as the other one. And it can pop open like that. And it has two pegs on this one, unlike the other one, some of them only had one. There we go. And then we have these guys right here, if we can pull them out. There we go. And I know you guys helped me in the comments below, but I totally forgot what these guys are again. I'm pretty sure this is the one you guys helped me with too. <laughs> I'm not good at remembering stuff. We have some classic, looks like salmon rolls right here. If we can pop that out. And I'm not sure if these come apart. There's multiple layers right there. Can you see that? It's like a little kind of area for it to go in. But I don't have the confidence to say that I could get this. Yeah, it's a three piece. So the center is separated along with the edges. I just don't have the confidence to like try to rip that out or probably rip the eraser into pieces. Go ahead and put that back down in there. And then let's take a really nice kind of overview of it. And this is what it looks like with everything in there. And I noticed something a little bit ago. This actually spins, kind of like you could, you know, pretend it's a miniature revolving sushi bar. But this also comes out as well. So you can see where all of the little pigs are kind of inserted. And then you could kind of have it on your own nice little uh, golden platter. Pretty cute stuff. And I want to share something that uh, a lot of people commented on was the opening to my claw machine video. And I want to show you guys how I achieved that. I actually bought a camera kind of roller slash stabilizer. It does live action shots and kind of smooths them out like a steady cam. And it is basically a pair of robotic wheels right here with a little attachment that mounts to a phone bracket that holds your phone in, kind of a standard tripod screw mount. And then in here we have the actual device, which is resilient if I do say so myself. And up here it even has these kind of little degrees of measurement for when you kind of go to use it and it starts rolling. They're very sensitive, so you only really have to adjust it by a very slight degree, and it will follow along that path. This is the front wheel. It actually turns, so all you do is go ahead and turn it on, and it comes with a little click remote that I have on the side right here. And all you have to do is click play, and it starts rotating, and it has multiple different settings to make it go faster or slower. Go ahead and pause that. All right, so I put it back here so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it would look like. The camera would normally be put right there, but when you press play, 
it does a really nice smooth pan. It's on a very minor curve right now. So it's going to go over here and then it's going to start to curve back to that side. Yep, there it goes. And then you can pause it as well. This thing is very useful for getting like more high quality objects or maybe even, you know, different things that are just special to you. You can get a really nice kind of pan on look on them. And it just gives this polish to your videos. And surprisingly, this was only $60. Um, a lot of these other ones that I have seen that are on a rail system, oh, well, by the way, this is compatible with a rail system, um, they're like a minimum of $250. Um, there's some cheaper ones, but the reviews are kind of mixed. But this one right here, it goes both directions. You can even make it spin in a complete 360 circle. So I think that the value for this one is insane. And like I said, you can just move over here, put this on here like that and then just mount your phone bracket to it, and then boom, you can just go ahead and have that full rotation. You could even put a DSLR on here probably. But yeah, kind of a quick video on this really nice little uh, camera stabilizer slash slider, and uh, I'm really excited to continue making videos with this. I have a video planned in the future of uh, something kind of retro, and I'm really excited to show you guys. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Is this something that you'd want to get for your YouTube setup or maybe even just filming, you know, things that you're interested in? Let me know. Today we're going to be looking at the iCharge Pro Cable. Versatility is key. Now this was sent to me by iCharge and I'm actually pretty excited because this doesn't just have one, but it has three different connectors. You can do micro USB, USB Type-C, and lightning bolt as well. This is also a 2.4 amp, so that is fast to charging, I believe. Let's go ahead and turn it around, and let's zoom in. It says right here it has 360 degrees of rotation, 180 degrees of bending, it's magnetic, and it has a nylon braided cable, which is pretty cool. It says one-handed operation, great to use for people who have disabilities or multitaskers. Has a secure connection, so the magnetic force is strong enough to hold your phone tight if you accidentally have it uh, falling when you're charging. And it has a free spin of 180 degrees, ultra durable LED indicator, and compatibility for almost any device. That's pretty cool. Really like the ability to have like multiple chargers. So let's go ahead, open this up, and see what it's all about. There we go. Comes in a little kind of sliding tray. All right, here we go. Has a little kind of thing right here to hold your little charging pieces. Set that down, take a closer look at it. And then this is the cable itself. Let's go ahead and focus in on it. Look at that. Nice shiny nylon. And then the front of this is the uh, kind of little magnetic thing. Let's see what that looks like. So I believe this is uh, where the LED indicator would be. And it has these little tiny kind of copper pieces that I'm assuming magnetic to the uh, whatever piece you want to put on there for charging. And it has some directions that it can turn it and go up like this. So if you want to like kind of hold your phone and you don't want the wire to be sticking straight downward, you can have it to the side. And then you also can move it the opposite direction as well. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and undo it real quick. Length feels nice. Wire feels like it's uh, pretty sturdy with that nylon on the outside. So I don't think that that's going to be breaking anytime soon. Let's go ahead and try out the pieces that we got right here, though. And see how well they connect and how well they work. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it. Alright, so we have the USB-C right here the lightning bolt, and then the micro USB. They come in this little tiny kind of uh, plastic holder. Let's see if we can just like grab the first one right here just by putting it right there. Does it pull out of the... it does. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Just kind of attaches itself. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And quite a bit of force to pull it off. Yeah, it just attaches right there. Oh, I see how it works. 
Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So as you can see, it has multiple different rings right here. And what happens is these little tiny um, copper pieces kind of move along this little circle-y area, and they're all separated, so it's able to do the, the voltage and all of that kind of stuff on two separate rings. That's actually really smart, because that means it can rotate like 360. So if you had it on here, it can rotate all the way around like that. See? And then it can move, you know, this way and that way. So that's actually super cool and super convenient. And you're going to get a charge 360 degrees, and that also means that this isn't going to break on you as well. Pretty cool. And of course the other ones have the same thing. You just click it on there. Pretty cool. And then the micro USB. Pretty easy to do. All right, and now let's go ahead and grab some devices and see how it works while it's charging. The first thing I have right over here, if we zoom in on the back, is my iPad. So we can go ahead and plug it in. So I'm assuming we can just throw this directly in here. We don't even have to like... Boom. It's just kind of inside. All right, so I went ahead and plugged this into the wall. Let's just go ahead and attach it now. And look at that, we got charge. Pretty cool, I like that a lot. My LG uh, V60 came with something like this on the case, but I like how this one is just, uh, I don't know, it, it works better in a way. So you can move this direction and then that direction. And as you can see, it's actually not coming off. The problem with my LG V60 kind of charging case that has the magnetic is it's stiff. And the magnetic, like if this was stiff, it would just pop right off like that. But since it has that swivel any direction, you don't have to worry about it. It actually stays on there pretty well, and I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing that we can charge with this. So many of you probably uh, are on your Nintendo Switches lately due to Animal Crossing. And uh, this is my Switch. It's a little dirty right now, but it's my Switch Lite. And if we go ahead and focus in on the port, all we have to do is add this USB-C. Grab it and plug it in. There we go. And all we have to do is add this wire and click. And it is charging. Pretty cool. I actually can just leave this on here and then whenever I want I just throw this here and let's say I'm gaming and it would be like normally sticking out. I could do it something like that so I can hold it closer to my lap or closer to the, uh, well, you know, whatever surface that I have it next to. And uh, yeah, it still spins, still moves around, and uh, it doesn't come off. Pretty cool stuff. So I don't have many things that work with micro USB anymore, but I found these headphones of mine that do. So let's go ahead and plug that last one into here. There we go. And then just attach. There we go. Headphones are charging right there. Pretty cool stuff. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think these connectors are pretty cool. Cable's good quality and uh, can work for multiple different things too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for sending this out to me. And if you guys are interested, I'll have this linked in the description below. And as always, today we're gonna be looking at a mechanical keyboard. This is the Geek GK61 RGB keyboard. This is a USB-C keyboard and it was sent to me by Banggood and I'll have an affiliate link in the description below where you can go to buy this and also help support the channel. So this was sent to me for free and I'm really happy to open it up because it looked really cool on the listing and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and open the box and check it out. Ooh look at that push it down a little bit and it comes kind of encased in this little cardboard area so it's safe when it travels go ahead and pull it out of here now these are brown switches so they're mechanical switches let's go ahead and focus in on it 
This one doesn't come with a number pad. It is a 61 key. It's kind of a smaller one, as you can see, the size of my hand compared to the keyboard. It's kind of nice and compact. I could actually set this next to a laptop. It'd probably be really nice as well. So let's go ahead and open it up. There we go, went ahead and peeled that off. And let's just go ahead and slide this guy out. Wow, this feels really nice in the hands, I'm not gonna lie. Kind of feels uh, like it has a nice weight to it, kind of premium feeling. And I'm gonna be honest, I was not expecting that with a kind of cheaper keyboard like this, but it actually feels really nice. Let's go ahead and set that down. And let's type my name. Works pretty good. Hello, everyone. This is JHR Reviews. Enter. Yeah, it feels really nice. And it's supposed to be RGB as well, so we're gonna go ahead and get this turned on. So it said that it's supposed to come with a USB-C, I believe. Um, I didn't see it in the box, but it might be under the flap, so let's take a look. And here it is. It did come with a USB-C. It was underneath the other portion. So let's go ahead and open this up. It comes with a nice little Velcro strap for it and a braided cord, which is very nice feeling. Keep in mind, this is an honest review. I know I'm saying positive things about it, but I would be telling you if there's anything wrong with it, even if I am doing this through an affiliate link. I'm always honest about my products I review. So let's go ahead and continue on. I'm gonna plug that in to the port on the back, which is the USB-C port. And then we can just plug this into my computer off to the side. All right, I went ahead and plugged it in. Warning for anybody who has photo sensitivity, some of these lights will probably flash. I'm unsure if it will trigger anything, but just to be safe, I'm putting this warning right now. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first setting that I'm on is the kind of touch setting where if you click a specific key, it will light up. There we go. You control with FN and then press again. So now when you press, it kind of gives off a interesting little uh, kind of flash of light, almost like a lightning bolt or something. FN again. And now we have a kind of wave that kind of disperses wherever you press, which is really cool. FN again. Actually, with this wave thing I didn't notice, it actually reacts to sound, which is insane. So if you're gaming, it'll actually react if you're playing on speaker. So look at this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, how cool is that? Let's go ahead and check out the other settings too. And then back again to the original position. And you can also press FN as well right here to adjust the brightness, I believe. There we go. And there's a bunch of other settings. This is actually programmable from what it says. You could actually program specific keys to light up. So how cool is that? Looks as though we have some other settings right here. So this is if it just wanted to be static. So that's a static green. Now this is the wave side to side, up and down, which is really cool looking, back to static. Not sure what that one does. Oh, this is the brightness adjustment, I believe. Yeah, look at that. So you can hold it and bring it all the way to maximum. It's pretty bright, very cool. And then I'm unsure how we do, this one's all the effects. I'm unsure how we currently change the color itself. That's just to turn it off and on it looks like. But I'll figure that out later. Anyways, green is one of my favorite colors so I'm not complaining and I already know we can change the colors based on what lights up. So that is super cool. And it sounds nice too. 
So um, I taught myself how to type when I was a kid, so if you notice me typing with only a few fingers, that's kind of how I do it. I kind of taught myself how to type myself. Uh, interesting little story, I won't go on about it, but basically online chat groups taught me how to type. So, lol, what's up, dude? This keyboard is cool. Enter. Very nice. And I actually have it plugged in my PC, so my PC is probably freaking out right now. <laughs> But yeah, so that's actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. And it says it's Bluetooth as well, so I'm assuming there's a built-in battery. So I'm wondering if I unplug it, if it'll stay on. It did not. I wonder if there is something else that you need to do, or maybe this isn't the Bluetooth version. Because um, up here on the top of this, it has a multitude of uh, different keyboards that are listed right here, so this might not be the Bluetooth version. I'm not sure how I would test that out, given the fact that the power is actually not on unless it's plugged in, but maybe if you plug it into a power supply, then the Bluetooth would be able to be activated. Unsure about that aspect, but I'll keep you up to date in the comments if there is any change with the Bluetooth setting in here. But this keyboard's really nice, and the keys are very nice and clicky and feel kind of smooth when you touch them. You know, like when the keys go in and out. Unlike my Razer keyboard, these feel a lot more, like, bouncy, if that makes any sense for anybody who has gaming keyboards. So, as I said, the affiliate link will be in the description below. And uh, before we end the video, let's go ahead and see what this last little thing in this box is. Oh, that's really nice. So, before we end the video, I want to tell you guys what this is. These are uh, key removers. So you can actually just stick these in between here and pull the keys out so that you can clean them and or replace them with different keys. How cool is that? There's actually a way you can 3D print keys and actually make your own keys too. I might make a video on that in the future. But yeah. What do you guys think about this keyboard? I think it's really cool, and I'm really happy I was sent this out because I needed another keyboard too for my other PC, so this works out. Pokemon, a worldwide smash hit in the 90s, and even still today. So let's take a look at this gold-plated piece of Pokemon history and take a trip down memory lane. How's it going guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. And today, as you saw from the intro, I have a limited edition Charizard gold-plated card. This is a 23 karat gold-plated trading card. And these came out a pretty long time ago at Burger King. And I actually had a few of these, but they got lost over the years. I found one that was still in the box, a little damaged, uh, the box, not the actual card. And I thought to myself, how can I pass up this opportunity? Because there's not a lot of these going around anymore. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And let's go ahead and slide this guy back into focus. So this is it. This is the Pokeball that contains the Charizard card. And I'm really excited to see this again because it has been years since I've actually seen one of these guys. So let's go ahead and open this up. And there we go. We have the Pokeball. Very nice and shiny. Has uh, three little pegs at the bottom for it to stand. And let's press the button. Oh boy. Look at that. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Wow. That's insane. Number six Charizard. Certificate of Authenticity. Let's pull that out too. We're going to move this to the side. And let's go ahead and focus in on here. Look at this, guys. Man, it has been a long time since I've seen one of these guys. 
This is so cool. This is probably one of the coolest thing I've ever seen Burger King release, I'm not gonna lie. How cool is that? Flame Pokemon. Uh, something. It's kind of hard to read it. Let's go ahead and turn it around again. Give a nice kind of look to it. Now this is gold plated like it says on the front. But the best practice is to not take it out of its case because you can discolor these. I've seen other ones that have been pretty discolored due to them being handled a lot as kids. But, uh, yeah, this is really pretty. I'm super happy with it because, honestly, I was really sad when I realized that my, uh, I think it was, um, Poliwhirl. But yeah, guys, isn't this so cool? It's like a... It's like a piece of time right here. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever gotten one of these. I am uh, just enamored with being able to hold one physically again. And uh, I don't know. Uh, pieces of nostalgia to me are really special. Let's go ahead and set this down real quick and look at this little certificate we got right here. Certificate of Authenticity. Pokemon Special Edition 23 karat gold plated trading card. Number 6 Charizard, officially licensed by Nintendo, and it even has the signature from uh, the chairman of Nintendo America. Let's go ahead and turn this around. It says, This Pokemon Special Edition 23 gold-plated trading card has been produced to the highest standards for Nintendo of America. It is made from the highest quality alloy to ensure a long-lasting life um, in value, and also beauty. We suggest that it remain in the clear cover which it was delivered. Fingerprints and exposure to weather will cause the superb finish to tarnish. Exactly what I was saying earlier in the video. So let's get this and slide it back into its nice little uh, thing in the back because we don't want to lose that. There we go. Let's go ahead and focus in on that. Slid it back inside of its little kind of holder. And then let's take one more really good look at this guy. Zoom out a little bit. Focus in. It looks as though it was handled with care all this time, which is really awesome. A lot of the time you see these and they've been exposed to quite the number of elements. So getting one that's in this nice a condition is insane. Really happy with this, really happy I got my hands on it. And it's gonna be really nice. I mean, I could even pass this down because this is gonna last a really long time. What do you guys think? Is this something that you would buy? Is it something that you had as a kid? Do you still have them is the real question. Because I found these things, uh, they disappeared a lot for me. Like a lot of my Pokemon stuff disappeared. Probably my mom getting rid of it because she thought I was too old. But, uh, joke's on you. I'm 26 and I got it back. <laughs> there we go. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Today, we're going to be looking at the X12 5.1 inch 1000 games console right here. This was sent to me by Banggood, and I'm going to have some affiliate links in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Let's go ahead and look at this box, though. On the side right here, if we focus in, you can see that this is the white version and is the X12 version. I believe that's a little bit better than the 9X version. And then on this side, we have some more depictions of the console. It says 5.1 inch. Handheld game console supports a maximum of a 32 gig TF card. And that's an additional purchase. So it looks as though we can put some ROMs on here, which is pretty cool. If we look at the top, focus in, it says... 
It can play games, music, film, audio, and record uh, audio as well. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what it's all about. Has a bit of a uh, clamshell design on the box. If we turn it down a little bit, you can see that it comes in a protective cardboard sleeve and has some documentation. Let's go ahead and slide that out. Set the console to the side for now. So right here is the little accessory booklet. And then it looks as though we have some cords in here. So we have one that's in a little plastic bag. Let's open that up. So it comes with some standard looking headphones. And then it also comes with a USB charging cable. It's the uh, old style kind of PS3 one. Go ahead and slide this out of the sleeve. And you know what? This reminds me exactly of a PSP, kind of like a PSP, but also a PS Vita as well, kind of like a mixture of both. Let's go ahead and slide this out of its little sleeve. Let's go ahead and focus in. Has a decent weight to it, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't feel cheap. And if we focus in down here, you can see that it has a USB, a TV out port, headphone jack. This is where you can put your micro SD, or as they call the TF card. We have a reset button. And then on the top right here, we have the volume button, the microphone, and the on and off switch. If we rotate it towards the back, it says portable multimedia player, and it looks as though we have some speaker grills on the backside, along with a small, what looks to be camera. All right. And then the screen itself actually looks pretty nice, has a nice little kind of matte feel to it. Might have a screen protector on it already, I'm not too sure. It says escape, start and select, and then we have some joysticks that feel exactly like the PlayStation Portable. Not gonna lie, like the original PSP it feels like, which I actually was a pretty big fan of that, so yeah. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if there's any charge. All right, so here we are in the menus, and the screen actually looks pretty nice, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how to change it to English, but uh, not really an issue, given the fact that the thumbnails are pretty self-exclamatory. We have um, the featured games up here, it looks like, and then if we go here, we have a list of uh, kind of folders and categories of different games that are inside of here. And then we have some video on here as well, so we can select that. Seems to play the video pretty well. Let's go to the audio next. And I don't want to get copy striked, but it seems to play audio fine as well. Let's go back. And then we also have the camera which I'm sure is probably not great, but uh, let's go ahead and see. And it actually works pretty good. I mean, for, you know, a handheld console, I'd s probably say this is about as good as like the 3DS. There we go. Yeah, it's actually not too bad, I'm not gonna lie. And go back, and then I believe this is the gallery. gives an example of some pictures that you can actually put on here. Let's go back again. And 
Now let's go ahead and check out some of the games that they have on here. So this looks like Street Fighter. Go ahead and start it up. Or it's called The King of Fighters. All right, now we're loading in. Yeah, I'm not doing too well at this. I've never really uh, played any games like this before. But it seems to play them pretty well. Not having any issues kind of going in there. And uh, I lost. So there we go. Not too bad, I'm going to be honest. And uh, the screen is actually pretty nice. The build quality actually feels pretty decent as well. Um, I wish there was an easier option to change it to English. All right, just a quick little interjection in the middle of the video. This actually can be set to English. You just have to scroll over to the side, which I didn't realize you could do. Go to settings, all the way down to system, and it will be the first option that allows you to set it to English. So yeah, this can be used in English. The rest of the video, I am going to be going through the UI in Chinese, but uh, I still was able to show everything that this device is about. So let's go ahead and continue to the rest of the video. But I do think since you can put in your own card for probably uh, emulation, this is a great device to kind of mess around with stuff like that. I'm going to try that out later, and I'll give you guys some updates whether or not it ended up working. But uh, feels good in the hands and uh, does what it says it does, and I think that's all that matters. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the link in the description below. Feel free to check it out. If you download the Banggood app, you can get 10% off coupon, I believe. So, yeah. Today we're going to be looking at these Pokemon wafer cookies, and I don't just have one. I got two of these guys because there are some stickers inside of here, and I wanted to see if I could get different ones. Let's take a quick look at this packaging before we kind of dig into tasting this. So this is by Latte, or Lotte, and it says Pocket Monsters with a nice depiction of Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur on the front. A little bit of flames on the side right there. Side has some information on it in Japanese. And then in the back right here, let's go ahead and focus in. It says that there is six grams of carbohydrates in one and a half pieces. So half of this is six carbs. Not too bad. Go ahead and zoom in right there. So this is a wafer bar, and it looks as though it is made with wheat. If you want to pause right there and kind of look at the ingredients right there, you can. Go ahead and move it away. I really like the shiny, kind of vibrant packaging on here. It's probably one of the main reasons I saw these is because the packaging is just so nice. Kind of has that retro Pokemon feel to it with all these starters right here. Let's go ahead and open this up, see what sticker we got, and then give it a bit of a try. And then we'll also open this guy up over here and see if we got a different sticker. Let's do it. the inside looks like. Just slide it out. Looks like it comes on some kind of little tray. Let's see what uh, sticker we got. And oh nice. I really like this Pokemon. I can't quite remember the name of it though. I can't believe I can't remember the name. It's one of my fiance's favorite ones, so she'll be really happy that we got it. And this is what the back looks like. But I want to take a closer look at this because the glitter on here is just really, really cool. Kind of holographic. That looks good. Look at that. It has some stars in the background. And when you move it really slow, you can kind of get that nice, kind of shiny holographic effect. And it says number 20. 
and Pocket Monsters, Nintendo. And of course the back you saw before has a uh, Blastoise on it, but I'm not sure the name of that one. I can't remember. Is it? That's not Typhlosion. No, that's that's wrong. I can't remember the name of this one. You know, I was really into Pokemon as a kid, but man, I feel like my brain just dumped all the names out of my head sometimes. There we go. And here is the wafer. Let's go ahead and focus in right there. Looks like we have a very thick chocolatey center all the way around. And it kind of has that uh, waffly cone kind of look to it. Let's go ahead and try it out. Now it's good, but it's a lot less rich than I thought it would be. And it's interesting because there's actually these little kind of chasms in here. These little tiny little nooks and crannies hold these larger pieces of chocolate. It's not like a thin, evenly distributed kind of layer. They're all kind of like wedged in between here. So I was kind of surprised to feel that in my mouth, but it's really good. Let's break it apart and see if we can't show you a little closer. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see right there, if we zoom in, focus in, you can see it takes the shape of the inside right here. Kind of like little diamonds. Pretty cool stuff. I'd rate this for me personally. Let's get this all out of the way. Probably around a 7 out of 10 for flavor. I like really light tasting things as well as rich tasting things. I think that this would be really good paired with coffee or tea. Let's go ahead and open this one up. And I'm not going to be eating this one, so we're just going to slide the sticker out and see if we got a different one, alright? Come on. Get out of there. All the crumbs are making it slippery. I'll set that to the side. I'll give that to my fiance. I'm sure she'll enjoy it. Ah, check it out. A Pokemon I can actually remember the name for. Pikachu. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't cringe too hard. Eevee. Very cute expression. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it changed that much. So when you move it down, it almost looks like the... Who's that Pokemon thing behind them? That's really cool. And the stars kind of pop out. How cool is that? Let's see if the other one does that too. It does. How cool is that? They both kind of have that effect going on. So these are the two stickers that I got and I'm going to give them both to my fiance. And I think the kind of cookie wafer is, like I said, about a 7 out of 10. Definitely needs to be paired with something, not something I'd buy just to eat by itself. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, today we're going to be looking at these Dragon Ball Super Chocolates that I got from Tokyo Central. If we uh, zoom in on the packaging real quick, this is kind of why it... Uh, caught my eyes because the popping colors on the package these kind of look like Crayola crowns to me though I'm kind of wondering uh, their design choice but I'm hoping that chocolate's going to be really good as you can see we have uh, Ultra Instinct Goku here on the front and then Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta let's go ahead and turn this around if we go ahead and focus it says right here that we got about 8 grams of carbs, and there's 2 servings per container. We have 25 milligrams of sodium, and then 8 grams of sugar is uh, pretty much equaling out the carb amount. We have a little bit of a diagram of what's inside. And then we have this official kind of 
don't know if you can see that. Let's focus in. Kind of a shiny toy animation seal of approval, I guess. And then this is what the side looks like. Has all the same kind of uh, logos. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And yeah, I think that this is a really nice packaging and uh, I'm really excited to try this out. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and open this and taste us these guys. Just gonna go ahead and put some scissors in here. There we go. And then we'll pop it off. There we go. And then we're just going to slide this little tray out of here. And there we go. Let's go ahead and bring this in and focus in on it. So right here we have Piccolo, Goku. We have two different hearts, kind of reminds me of Valentine's Day. And then we have Vegeta and Gohan. So we're gonna go ahead and try the Piccolo one and see what it's about. I'm not sure if these are different flavors or not, or there's something different in them, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, try it out. Let's see. There we go. Oh, they're flat. You know, for some reason, let's focus in on it. For some reason, I thought that these guys were gonna be like circular, like a crown, like on both sides. But for some reason, they are flat. I don't know, maybe it's just because I thought it looked like a crayon. It says Dragon Ball Super on the side. The art wraps around the back a little bit. And has a nice depiction of uh, Piccolo. Looks like he's going to be using his, uh, what was it, cannon attack or something like that. Let's go ahead and open this up. Special beam cannon, that's what it was. Looks to be a milk chocolate. Let's go ahead and try it out. Hmm. Now I would say that this is more on the lower quality end, but I'd still say that it's better tasting than like a standard Hershey's bar, if that makes any sense. Let's go ahead and open up the Goku one. Let's focus in on it. I like the depiction of uh, Ultra Instinct Goku. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I feel like maybe when they introduced Ultra Instinct, like if there's gonna be, I think there's a continuation that they're gonna be doing. Um, I feel like they should have introduced this at the end because like, spoilers if you haven't, you know, seen it, but this is pretty OP. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe they should have saved like his super OP form for like later, cause like, how can you really ascend beyond that? Though I guess you could really say when he hit Super Saiyan 3, what could you do after that too? But it looks as though we just got more milk chocolate in here. So we're not gonna go ahead and try that cause it's gonna be the same thing. Gonna grab the heart real quick and bring it into focus. So we have the heart right here. I'm assuming it's the same chocolate, but we're gonna undo it just to see. Yep, looks as though it is the same chocolate. And then I'm assuming these guys are too, but I just wanna kinda take a look at the packaging on these guys real quick versus actually opening them up cause I'll save them for later. So has a nice depiction right here of Vegeta, which is interesting because, you know, you'll look at this and you see Vegeta, but like if you look at the old Dragon Ball Z art, they're like even the farthest back, you know, the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, and then mid, you know, Boo Saga or, you know, the Cell Saga. I mean, 
it's just the difference in like the way he's drawn is so dramatic. Some people don't like the way that he's drawn in Super, but yeah, I don't mind. Then we got uh, Gohan right there. And Gohan's all right. Not my favorite character, but not my least favorite. I heard that originally um, they were thinking about trying to make Gohan the main character and kind of like snuffing out Goku. But uh, fans didn't like that and neither did um, the creator as well. Now that just might be an article I read, but uh, that's why Goku came back and why Gohan was so prominent in the Buu saga and then he kind of ended up not being. At least that's what I think. But yeah, a little bit of nerdy Dragon Ball Super slash Dragon Ball Z information for you guys. But yeah, what do you guys think? Is this something that you could see yourself buying for yourself or maybe for a friend or maybe even for the holidays? Let me know in the comments below. And today we're going to be looking at something I haven't looked at in a long time, and that is cat gotchas. Now, a while ago, I reviewed a Why Am I Sushi Cat, which is a really cute concept where they put cats kind of like in a meme kind of way on different food items. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the packaging real quick. So we have the kind of similar thing. By the way, this is by Clever Idiots, and I got this from Tokyo Central in Gardena, California. It says, Why Am I Sushi? says number two and then it shows like a little kind of teardrop right there if we move it to the side and focus in it says that it comes with a key ring and if you want to pause you can check out all of their official kind of uh, information on the side right there it says collect them all and then it has a depiction of all of the different ones that you can get very nice. Some warning information if you'd like to look at that, primarily for choking and for the age range of this. And then we move to this side so you can get any of these guys that are in here. And out of these ones, I think I would want to get Maggie. Maggie's pretty cute. I like the cat's face on that. Though there's also Miss Lily, which looks like the cat that is on the front of the box. And then the bottom just has the information again. So let's go ahead and open this up and see which one I got. Peel that back. And then focus in. And it has some kind of thing that it says right here. Let's see if we can read it before opening it up. Actually, we'll read it after we see which one we got, right? Or actually, we might be able to. It says, your state of mind is the key to finding sushi cats. There will be, there will be a world of sushi cats waiting for you beyond this gap. That's really cute. And we got... Dun, dun, dun. We ended up getting, let's focus in on it, that first one I believe that was on the box. Let's bring the box back in here. Yeah, we ended up getting that guy right there. The Ibu Ibenosuke one, if I said that right. And it is really cute, actually. Let's go ahead and open this guy up real quick. These scissors aren't that great anymore. There we go. And then slide him out of here. And here we go. Let's focus in on the face. So I believe some of these, I'm not sure if it's this one or not, are hand painted actually. I don't think it's this brand that is, but some of the other cat gotchas that I got are hand painted. So its facial features are very well done. You even got the reflectivity in the eye, which is pretty crazy. It has a bit of an elastic band right here. So I'm wondering, you know, if that comes off, but I'm not gonna push it. 
And then on the back, it looks as though we have a pair of socks. That's interesting. Maybe that's not socks. Actually, no, that looks like socks. So we have some socks right there. And then we have the rice, which is always really well done. You can kind of see the shininess of it. Some kind of symbol right there. I'm not sure what it means. It says AB. Kind of looks like a lobster. And then at the bottom, it says made in China, C1, non-P, D1801, 2018. And then of course you get the little kind of thing right here so you can put it on your keychain. What do you guys think about this? I think this one's really cute. I really liked the one I reviewed before that had the cucumbers on top, though the socks are really cute too. And then I think this might actually be a fan, like one of those uh, expandable fans that you could fan yourself with. But yeah, this is the Why Am I Sushi Cat that I ended up getting. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you like to see more cat gotchas in the future? I would very much like to know your opinion. And today we're going to be looking at these really interesting chocolate shapes that you can kind of form into different patterns and even stack on top of each other, it looks like. As you can see from the depiction right here, it's in kind of a construction looking area. This is by Crazy, and I got this at Tokyo Central in Gardena, California. I thought it'd be really nice to kind of see what we could do with these little chocolate pieces and see what they taste like. I really like how colorful the packaging is, but without further ado, let's flip it around and see the nutritional information and then open these guys up. Let's focus in on the back. It says we have a total of 16 carbohydrates and about 0.81 ounces. And then right here it shows everything that is inside of here. If you want to go ahead and pause that so you can see what is inside of it, go ahead. There we go. And we're gonna just flip this around and open this up. So it probably has like a pull tab on here somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, it says open right here. So let's go ahead and open it up. There we go. And now let's go ahead and focus in on the inside. Look at all the little shapes in there. Let's go ahead and dump these out on the table and see what we got. There we go. And it seems like the colors aren't as vibrant as they were on the packaging, which is a little disappointing, but it's not really a big deal. So if we go ahead and zoom in on the chocolate, you can see what that looks like. Seems like the chocolate has a little bit of a layer of kind of like almost an older look to it. Like that powdery look that chocolate gets when it gets old. Kind of concerning. I'm not saying these are bad, but they don't look as appetizing as they did on the front of the package. Let's go ahead and set that down. Grab one of these other guys. So this is what these guys look like. Pardon my fingers, I have kind of gone deep into working with the glue the last hour, so I got about as much off as I could. Kind of shiny. I thought they'd be coated in some kind of, like, sugar shell, but they're not. Let's go ahead and focus up on this. I wonder if this is strawberry flavor. I'm going to try all of these different ones out. I think the last one I didn't show was either the yellow or green one. But they all kind of look the same. They're not covered in anything specific, like a sugar-coated shell like I thought originally. Let's see about stacking them, because that's what the point, I believe, of this was. So if we look at the depiction it gives, we should be able to stack one like this and like this. And then maybe like 
like that. And yeah, they're actually stacking pretty well. I'm surprised because my table's not the sturdiest. That's about as much as I probably can go. So they do stack, but it's definitely not as premium looking or feeling as, you know, the depiction would give. But this is for kids, so, I mean, I give it a solid pass. Let's see if this chocolate tastes good or old. I'm going to start off with these kind of whiter looking pieces. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, these kind of taste old. They kind of taste like they're past their expiration date. Not that it would hurt you or anything with chocolate, I don't think. But um, it definitely doesn't taste fresh and it's kind of gritty a little bit. Let's go ahead and try this one out. I think that one has a flavor to it for sure. I'm not sure what, let's try the pink one. Pink definitely has kind of a strawberry flavor to it. And then the green. Let me be honest, they all kind of taste the same to me outside of the um, regular chocolate ones. You know, I don't usually give things a bad review unless they're, you know, bad. But I, I don't like these very much. They're very dry and old tasting. Um, you would think from the packaging with how reflective the outer layer of these are that they would be, you know, like a chocolate shell, which I think is a little misleading. Um, there's no solid shapes like that. Oh, actually, never mind. I lied. There is a single one in here. This is the only actual solid uh, shape. All the rest of them are the little tiny other pieces. So that's a little disappointing. Um, I think this would be really good if it didn't taste so old. And I'm not sure why. Because it says 2020-08. Um, and it's not past that yet. So it's not expired. Maybe it just wasn't stored in the correct temperatures uh, or, or whatnot. Or maybe this is just how this kind of chocolate is. But I'd say... It, its flavor profile outside of its consistency is a solid six because I love the taste of strawberry kind of uh, Japanese chocolate but uh, the consistency is definitely like a one it's very gritty and uh, old tasting but I'll probably still end up finishing these off or pawning them off to my fiance so but yeah I think that uh this little adventure was still worth it, kind of seeing how interesting these guys are. And they do stack, so that's something. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Feel free to check out my Patreon. I have a multitude of different tiers that can help you support the channel. Uh, feel free to share this with your friends. And liking and commenting definitely helps push that algorithm out there. And as always... I'll see you in the next video.